Okay, we're talking about the American Revolution. Now, we're going to break this up. It's a long period of time for the American Revolution. We're going to break it up from 1774 all the way to 1783. Most people think, probably, that the uh, American Revolution, if they think about it at all, started 1776, because that's when the Declaration of Independence was, was read, was signed. All right. But actually, the fighting started earlier, and preparations for revolution started earlier than that. So we've already covered the causes for the revolution, and we've seen how that took a long time. There's a lot of events, okay? Similar thing here with the revolution. Lasted a long time. We're going to break it up into several different areas. Most of the things that uh, you're going to want to know if, if you get asked, they're going to be here, if you get asked on a test, here and here. We have the build-up, 1774, 1776, earlier, 1776, 1778, the middle, 1778 to 1781, and then the last couple of years, 1781 and 1783. Most of the things that you're going to get asked, if you are asked the question, are going to be here in the beginning, the build-up, and the early years, all right? And I say build up because it's, it's build up to the declaration. Now, I don't want you to think that, again, that's when the war started because it's really not. Fighting started before that, 1775. But it was a big deal, Declaration of Independence, all right? So that's most of the things. We are gonna cover just a little bit in the middle years, here in this kind of middle period, just so you know. Don't think you're gonna get asked about that. And there's two big events that you might need to know here at the end, all right? So who are we talking about? We're talking about the colonies and Great Britain, of course. We're gonna see that France and Spain join. There's an event here. We're not gonna really get into what happened or what they did, but we're gonna see that there's an event that brought uh, France and Spain into the war on the side of the colonies. And uh, in the colonies, who are we talking about? Well, I don't know if you're gonna get asked this, but I think it's kind of interesting. Let's divide people into three groups, patriot, loyalist, and neutral, okay? Patriot, loyalist, and neutral. Patriot, people who supported independence, breaking from England. Loyalist, people who did not support breaking from England. And neutral, people who didn't take a side. So. Historians estimate about 40 to 45 percent of the population supported the Patriot cause. They also estimate that somewhere between 20 and 30 percent of colonists, now these are all colonists here, did not support the Patriot cause. They were loyal to England. And they estimate that between 25 and 40 percent, it's a pretty big range there, were neutral. Okay. So not a majority in any of these cases supported independence, but a plurality. Okay? So most of the people did support, well, perhaps, I guess it could be tied here. We got 40, 40, and 20, right? Could be same number, or it could be most, right? But maybe, maybe not most by a lot. We're not exactly sure. So... Uh, let's go ahead and get started with our videos as we go through the series of events, okay? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take you through not all of the events, not all of the battles, not all of the people, but the most well-known ones, and the ones that are in the teaks, somewhere in the teaks, mostly fifth grade, but somewhere in the teaks, the ones that are mentioned mostly, um, the ones that are mentioned in the teaks, and those are the ones that, if you get asked a question about them, that's what you need to know, right? Let's go ahead and get started. 